We're back for the part two of our animal behavior review. And when we left off, we were moving on to social behavior in animals. Let's go down to here. So when we look at social behavior in animals, we see a number of different types, but most of these behaviors relate to uh, decreasing competition. We talked about in class that competition is usually bad for everyone involved because the time you spend competing, the energy uh, you spend competing could be used for doing other things like finding food or finding a mate. So when we look at these agonistic behaviors, we talked about some of these contest uh, threats, displays, uh, where one of the organisms usually submits before any real damage is done. In this interspecific uh, competition or this display, um, it usually uh, helps us to avoid conflict that would be detrimental to everyone. So it may be baring of teeth or these uh, lobsters or whatever these are sizing each other up and as soon as one of them realizes that hey the other guy's bigger and stronger and probably gonna win they usually the, the, the loser or the eventual loser who would have lost will back away and kind of acquiesce and thus we avoid the conflict. Some specific types of these uh, interactions are things like dominance hierarchies uh, or a pecking order and the value of having a dominance hierarchy is that everyone no one has to guess kind of who's in charge or who's going to eat first and all of a sudden when we don't know who the top dog is there may be some fighting amongst the the group to determine that but having it set gives the social group some order and thus eliminates uh, or decreases conflict when we look at territorial behavior or defending an area, uh, oftentimes you're defending an area that has a, f a food supply you want to protect or maybe uh, a supply of, of possible mates. Uh, again, by setting up these territories, we actually decrease the chance that we come in contact and, and compete with each other. So we see these territorial behaviors. And then we move on to a, a more docile. Uh, interactions like mating behaviors and courtship behaviors and sometimes the animals you see these are very elaborate courtship dances you'll see among birds uh, or other interactions where animals have to um, induce uh, reproduction um, and a lot of times these displays are displays of health but oftentimes they're communicating um, you know who's of what species so these birds come together and they engage in a very complex dance uh, and it lets them know that this is someone of their species and also like I said can display a, a level of health or fitness so we're selecting our mates based upon these features hopefully to increase the chance that our genetic content will be passed on to healthy offspring in class we also briefly uh, talked about different mating systems that we see in the uh, animal kingdom uh, from the promiscuous systems where there are no pair bonds or lasting relationships and so maybe each uh, reproductive event may be with a different partner and we said there's there can be some value to that from an evolutionary perspective in that you're certainly increasing the chances that you'll come across someone that's a good genetic match for you or that your genes, your half of the genetic material will get matched up with another half that's going to be successful in uh, propagating uh, to the next generation. It's also going to ensure that within the population there's lots of variation. So there's a value to that kind of uh, approach to, to passing along your genes. But we also see uh, in some animals monogamous relationships and the value there is that you can spend a lot of energy finding the very best mate but then you don't have to do that again the next season, the next season, or the next day. Uh, you've spent that energy to find that pair bond and then you can get into a cooperative uh, relationship and maybe even share the, the parenting uh, tasks uh, of the offspring. But at least that part of the, the puzzle is already done with. That energy is spent in finding a mate and you don't have to do it uh, again. And so that's a successful uh, system in terms of the evolutionary uh, benefit. And then there's the polygyny and polyandry uh, systems like one male and many females like a harem or one female with many males like you might see in a beehive. We spent a little time in class talking about communication signals, uh, interspe intraspecific within species where we're uh, either communicating to stay out of my way, uh, out of my territory, maybe it's alerting others that there's danger around or calling for a mate, uh, like a fog croaking to, to find a mate, um, and also in the communication for caring for offspring. And this communication can be uh, you know, auditory, certainly lots of animals will vocalize. 
sometimes this communication can be chemical with uh, pheromones or other scents that are left maybe uh, marking your territory with scent markers but also pheromones which can induce behavioral changes in other animals and finally some of these uh, communication signals can be visual uh, maybe with uh, displays of feathers or uh, other visual um, displays to uh, communicate maybe like a lightning bug with the flashing of their their tail end to communicate to find a mate um, and then to uh, kind of wrap things up here uh, the last thing we talked about, a very interesting concept of the concept of altruism. When we look at behaviors and as the, um, in the evolutionary context, we think about that behaviors should increase our fitness. They should help us survive and us reproduce. And so we'd expect to see selfish behaviors, but maybe we wouldn't expect to see altruistic behaviors, a behavior that's selfless. By definition, any time you spend energy and it doesn't directly help you, that it would decrease your fitness because that's energy you could spend, uh, you know, elsewhere. But uh, we find that we do see behaviors that look very altruistic in species other than humans, and we'll take humans out of the equation for now and uh, think of other animals. Um, so we talked about in class maybe a chipmunk uh, calling out danger that there's a hawk nearby and standing up and calling out, alerting everybody to the danger, which helps everyone else but may make himself uh, a target. So why would an animal do this? Uh, why would that be? Why would that that behavior evolve uh, when it de seems to decrease fitness? The answer comes when we look at who the altruistic behavior is targeted to, and in most times, the altruistic behavior is targeted to a group of animals who share genetic material with you, and therefore, by helping them, you are helping your genetics, uh, by helping your genes pass along. Um, and so we talked about the concept of inclusive fitness um, by helping those who share our genes. We're helping our genes move on to the next generation, kind of indirectly. And there's very, uh, you know, good examples of this. You look at uh, the social behaviors of bees. You have certain bees whose job it is to only defend the hive, and so far as to, uh, you know, sting anyone who may try to uh, get to the hive. And when they sting, they may even die. Um, so it's the ultimate sacrifice for those who share their genetic uh, material. And we can think of lots of other types of, of these uh, social behaviors. You can look at um, uh, different types of animals that live in social groups, and they'll share some of the responsibilities of caring for the young, even those who aren't directly related to them, maybe you know, uh, cousins and uh, uh, grand grandchildren uh, um, um, and, and nephews and nieces. And we see that inclusive fitness by being in a group. So finally, I'd ask you to maybe go to, I made this little flow chart. I'm not sure how, how good it is. You may be able to figure it out. Uh, I thought about putting a word box, but I said, nah, you're AP students, so you can figure it out. But, uh, you know, pause the video on this screen and see how you would do kind of filling out this concept chart uh, on animal learning. And I hope that gives a, a good quick review. I think it'll be good to prepare us for this mini test we have coming up. And um, uh, you can send me an email if you have any question, uh, and I'll be checking my email frequently. Thank you.